Welcome back. The SAT and the ACT love to test a grammar rule called parallelism. That's just a fancy way of saying to make things in a sentence match. The thing over there has to look like the thing over there. But there are some trickier variations. So in this video, let's look at how parallelism can be tested on the SAT and the ACT. If you find this helpful, please hit the like button, share, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so that you can be updated whenever I post a new video. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay, let's get into the details of parallelism. So let's look at three different sentences that each have an error in them. Think about why each of these sentences is wrong. The first one, I told my roommates that I refused to get a dog because it would be loud, needy, and create a lot of mess. There's a mistake there. Why is that bad? A lot of my students like to tell me, well, it just doesn't sound right, or it just doesn't flow. Sure, but let's try to be a little more specific than that. So, let's look at that last part. The dog would be loud, needy, and create a lot of mess. They're trying to say the dog would be adjective, adjective, and then adjective. By saying loud, needy, and create a lot of mess, it ruins that flow. So it should say the dog would be loud, needy, and messy. Now we have all adjectives to describe the dog. Let's look at the second one. Running around the park with my dog is more fun than to exercise alone. Why is that one bad? Look at that verb running. It ends in an ing, but then it's being compared to the verb to exercise. Running is more fun than to exercise. You can't take an ing verb and compare it to a to verb. That's not parallel. They have to match. So we have to say either running is more fun than exercising or to run is more fun than to exercise. Either of those would be fine that would make the verbs match. And in the third one, if one wants to do well, you should study for at least an hour each week. Why is that bad? Look at the pronouns that they're introducing. If one wants to do well, but then they change one to you, those need to stay consistent. So it should say, if one wants to do well, one should study, or if you want to do well, you should study. And this is called parallelism, where you have to make things match. So. When you see a list or repeated structure, keep everything consistent. Let's see how this can come up on a question. This shift started in 1824. Klinger defied convention by stressing emotion over reason, passion over decorum, and he replaced thought with action. This paved the way for composers like Wagner. Wagner attempted to move away from realism by dropping the orchestra pit into a chasm, using epic set pieces, and he employed a double proscenium to create distance between actors and the audience. I'll give you a minute. Press pause and work on both. So let's look at that first one. That sentence is trying to establish a very specific type of list, so to speak. They're saying he stressed emotion over reason, passion over decorum, and he replaced thought with action. That ruins the flow. They're trying to say he did something with noun over noun, noun over noun, should be noun over noun. The answer is B, and let's read it that way. Klinger defied convention by stressing emotion over reason, passion over decorum, and action over thought. That now flows noun over noun, noun over noun. And in the second one, look at that sentence. Those three verbs, dropping, using, and then he employed, doesn't flow. It needs to say he did something by dropping blah blah blah, using blah blah blah, and employing blah blah blah. The answer is H. And let's just read it that way to hear it for the flow. Wagner attempted to move away from realism by dropping the orchestra pit into a chasm, using epic set pieces, and employing a double proscenium, blah 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 blah, who cares about the rest, the verbs now match. And these are all examples of parallelism, making different things in a sentence match. But now let's look at another variation. Here's another sentence where something is wrong. Think about the error in this sentence. The brunch at the Waffle House tastes better than the Pancake House. Why is that bad? Well, it's saying the brunch at the Waffle House tastes better than the Pancake House. If we say it tastes better than the Pancake House, it sounds like we're eating the Pancake House, like it tastes better than the bricks of the Pancake House. We need to compare the same item. So it needs to say the brunch at the Waffle House tastes better than the brunch at the Pancake House. That would be parallel. So let's see how this looks on a question. The most important thing that I learned in engineering school is that the architecture of Tudor houses is infinitely more complex than ranch houses. Why is that bad? Same reason. 
They're saying the architecture of Tudor houses is more complex than ranch houses. The answer would be C. The architecture of Tudor houses is infinitely more complex than the architecture of ranch houses. So, another type of parallelism is to compare like things. Whatever you talk about in the first part of the comparison has to stay consistent into the second part of the comparison. But now let's make things a little harder. So how can you fix these two sentences? They each have an error. Stephen Sondheim's writing approach is far more ambitious than Jerry Herman, and Stephen Sondheim's songs are far more ambitious than Jerry Herman. So why is that first one bad? Stephen Sondheim's writing approach is more ambitious than Jerry Herman. We're comparing Stephen Sondheim's writing approach to the person Jerry Herman. We can't compare a writing approach to a person. We need to compare a writing approach to a writing approach. Now a lot of my students want to tell me here that it should say Stephen Sondheim's writing approach is far more ambitious than Jerry Herman's writing approach. It's not wrong per se, but it's not the language that the test wants. They specifically want you to say this. Stephen Sondheim's writing approach is far more ambitious than that of Jerry Herman. By saying that of, it refers back to the writing approach. And now let's try it with a plural example on the second one. Stephen Sondheim's songs are far more ambitious than you could say Jerry Herman's songs, but that's not what they want. They want you to say Stephen Sondheim's songs are far more ambitious than those of Jerry Herman. By saying those of, it refers back to the plural word songs. So, what is another acceptable way to compare like things? For a singular item, you could say that of, and for plural items, you can say those of. Let's see how this comes up on a question. Sean felt that the annual rates offered by the Standard Insurance Company, while inconsistent, were still more predictable than the emerging company. I'll give you a minute. Press pause. Give it a try. So you have to start by asking, what is this sentence trying to compare? Well, the first part of the comparison says the rates offered by the Standard Insurance Company, but then it compares it to the emerging company, and that's not right. If we're talking about the rates in the first part, we have to be talking about the rates in the second part. So the answer is J, then those offered by. And let's read it that way just to hear the flow. Sean felt that the annual rates offered by the Standard Insurance Company, while inconsistent, were still more predictable than those offered by the emerging company. Now we're comparing the rates to the rates. Now many of my students sometimes think that the answer is G, then that of. But what would it have to say for that to be the answer? The first part of the comparison would have to say the rate offered by the company. A singular rate of a company can be compared to that of another company. But as long as they're saying rates, it needs to be the plural, and that's why the answer is J. And let's try one more variation. Back to the one we just saw a moment ago. Stephen Sondheim's writing approach is far more ambitious than Jerry Herman. We know it needs to say Stephen Sondheim's writing approach is far more ambitious than that of Jerry Herman. And to make it plural, Stephen Sondheim's songs are far more ambitious than, should be, those of Jerry Herman. But now if we just say Stephen Sondheim is more ambitious than Jerry Herman, now we could just say his name. So you're either comparing the person's item to the person's item or the person to the person. And that's another way the test will like to throw in parallelism. Let's see how. Brian knew that he had to consume more than the calorie intake of Matt in order to be ready for the hot dog eating contest. I'll give you a minute. Press pause. Give it a shot. So what are we comparing in this sentence? The first part of the sentence says Brian, but then Brian is being compared to the calorie intake of Matt. And that's not right. If that first part of the comparison just says Brian, then we just need to compare it to Matt. The answer is D. Let's read it that way to hear it. Brian knew that he had to consume more than Matt in order to be ready for the hot dog eating contest. In order for the second part of the comparison to say that of or those of, we would have to be talking about an item belonging to Brian. But since we're just saying Brian, we need to compare that to just Matt, not the item of Matt. So again, make sure you're always comparing people to people or the item of a person to the item of a person. That's what it means to compare like things. Now, the concept of making things in a sentence match also appears in other rules as well. For example, the court changed blank decision. What word would you say here? Well, the court is a singular thing, so you need a singular pronoun. 
So the answer is its. The court changed its decision. If it said the people in the court, that would be plural. That would make the answer there. Likewise with the second one. The group of students, blank, going on a trip. Every one of my students likes to say the word are. Their ear tells them students are going on a trip. But careful, if you ever have a sentence that says the noun one of the noun two, what we focus on is the noun one. The group is the noun that's doing the action, not the students. So if we eliminated of students, we could say the group is going on a trip. And the answer is actually is. The group of students is going on a trip. And for those looking for some extra points, that of students is called a prepositional phrase, but who cares, you don't need to know that, as long as you know the noun one of the noun two, we focus on the noun one. That's what goes along with the verb. That first example wanted you to match a pronoun to its antecedent, and the second one wanted you to match a subject to its verb. Be sure to check out my grammar playlist where I cover these additional rules in more detail. But in general, the overall concept remains the same. Make sure that things in a sentence match. The thing over there has to agree with the thing over there. And that's what we mean by making a sentence parallel. Thanks for watching. And remember, plan your work, work your plan. Thank you.